Well, the center line on Orca is really coming together now. We're just about ready to bolt the first scarf together between the after section of the keel and the forward section. And, uh, you know, it's actually going to be temporarily bolted together. So uh, we're going to drill the holes. What I've done here is figured out exactly how I want to drill it. You know, and uh, this whole scarf is designed so the ends stay down by themselves. If you put one bolt in it, the ends wouldn't rise up because they're trapped under this little angle. So the thing I want to do is put a bolt through here on an angle that's not 90 degrees to the scarf itself. So when you tighten it up, it wants to push the two pieces apart, you know, to make the scarfs, the ends look really good. You know, I have to say about drilling holes like this, this is the start of drilling on this boat right here. And drilling can be very, very uh, destructive to what you're trying to do if you don't go about it exactly right. Drilling is the hardest part of boat work. It really is. And, uh, you know, there's so many different kinds of bits and so many different kinds of situations that uh, it becomes pretty complex. Now, this isn't real difficult, but you have to be careful with this even. I put a spacer in the middle of the scarf right here so that when I drill it, it kind of jumps over that little space. And uh, later on, when I take it apart and pull that spacer out of there and put a rod through there, it'll make the two pieces want to slide on each other and get tighter at the ends. You know, that's the whole idea of it. I'm going to chase all these holes again anyhow, but right now I'm going to drill them 9 sixteenths. I'm going to put half inch ready rod through it. And later on, I'm going to bore them out to 5 eighths. First, I'm drilling a 9 16 hole with a spade bit. I'm really trying to get the center of the spade bit on the cross there. You know, they kind of wander around so you can push them sideways and kind of influence to be where you want it. Then I'm going to take a hole saw and cut a countersink that's 90 degrees to the bolt hole. That's for the nut and washer right there. And uh, I'm not going past the corner of the, the hole, really, because I want to take a chisel and be able to cut that out of there. I get an approach angle on this one. It makes it easy, but I couldn't do this one if I was way down in a hole with a chisel. I would use multiple size hole saws, and it'll chew all of that right out of there. But right now, this is all we have to do is chisel this little bit out of there. These chisels were given to me by my friend Brian, who actually bought a boat from me. They're really nice chisels. Sheffield steel from England. This one's just what I need to get the bottom of this cleaned up. And, uh, you know, I've got quite a few other sizes. They're fantastic, really. Now, I'm going to clamp a little piece of wood across here on that line. And uh, I'm going to follow that stick with my drill bit. I have to kind of sight it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's got to be good. Like that. Now I'm just going to sight it like this because this piece of wood is flexible actually and the surface is a little hollow so it's actually adjustable as you turn this and uh, I've got it nice and straight now so we're going to follow that. Now I'm going to countersink our hole again and this is meant for a pilot for the ship auger. So there's quite a few steps to this but now we're going to drill right through it and we have a barefoot bit right here. So Halsey's down the other end making sure it's the right height. And I'm just kind of got my eye over that stick and making sure it's lined up with that. So you can stop it anytime you want without stopping the drill because you just pull back. And uh, you can control the speed, not like any other drill with a pilot. Because doing this with a pilot, I don't know, they drift a little bit. And the other problem is it loads the pilot up and stop, it stops it from drilling. So you got to pull it all the way out and clean the pilot out. These bits like this do not load up. We're going to see how close it comes out to the mark on the other side. But Once I'm done drilling, I'm going to remove a few clamps because I have to get some space and pull that spacer right out of there. All right, I'm not going to tighten them up really, really tight because I'm going to go down aft there and take a sledgehammer and give it a couple taps. Now, you have to be careful doing that. If you whack it too hard, it'll just bounce back. So. You whack it a little bit and then tap it a little bit at the end. All right, that's good. And then you go down there and you can see that the thing is closed right up. Because I want to line it up really nice before I put any more holes in it. You know, line it up at the ends really easy. One down here, one down the other end. Now I'm going to cut our stock to length. I'm going to use a little four inch grinder because it's kind of easy. I don't know if I have enough power today to cut that off with a hacksaw. So, you know, this makes a lot. And it looks good too. And then once I cut it off, I'll just take the grinder and cut that little burr off there so if you get in contact with it, it won't cut you all up. In 
And here we go with our first bolt. Now it slides right in because it's only a half an inch and the hole is 9 sixteenths. So it's convenient. You can slide them in and out real easy. It's got tons of power. The ready rod has more threads per inch than a clamp. So it's got twice the power to begin with. But then you've got this big long handle too, the wrench. I, I don't know what you could lift with one of these things, but I imagine you could lift tons with it actually. So we put three of those through there and believe me, it's clamped together. This scarf right here is a little bit different than the one down there. That one is actually more difficult because it's double-ended. In other words, you have to fit it on both ends simultaneously. So everything becomes a little bit more important. The fits, you know, and the draw type. And this one's just tapered right out on one end. So, you know, this one's very easy to do. I don't really have to even pull it along or space it. All I have to do is drill it nice and level. And it's going to be kind of on an angle like that. It has to be over 90 degrees right there or under 90 degrees on the other side whichever way you want to call it but that's what's going to happen just like that so i've removed the spanner and i put it on a couple of horses behind me because i was going to drill this hole or i'm going to drill this hole right through the forefoot and up through the keel now that's the one that's going to be a draw tight this is the only bolt hole the only bolt that's going to have the head of it on the top hiding between the, between the keel and the spanner. So I'm putting that one in first. This keel's going to come apart a number of times, so I want these things to slide in and out really easy. Now, you know, I'm going to take them out. I'm going to be able to flip each piece over separately and cut the rabbit. number of advantages to this right here. The most important part of drilling these holes is to get it sighted properly at the very beginning. I'm doing my sighting over the stick and Halsey's doing his sighting from the other end because when it gets committed to the hole in maybe say two and a half inches or so, you don't turn it from there. It drills perfectly straight so whatever direction you had it in when you first started, that's where it goes. On the other side, I finally figured out how to countersink this hole with a hole saw without a quarter inch pilot. I actually put a bolt in the end of the pilot, in the end for a pilot, and uh, I whittled it down on a grinder until it was exactly the right size for the hole, and I'm using that for a pilot because the hole was already drilled. The reason why I do these countersinks early like this is because I want the nut and washer to sit nice and flat in the bottom of the hole. Otherwise, it bends the ready rod a little tiny bit, and that's not good. I wouldn't be able to use it over. The other thing I'm doing here is sinking the whole nut and washer below the surface because the spanner is going to go over that. So that's obviously going to be converted to bronze just like everything else, but uh, it's going to be put in there in bronze before we bolt the spanner over it. The reason why ultimately we're going to use bronze in this situation is because bronze is a non-ferrous metal. And uh, it doesn't get so much electron migration into the wood around the fastenings, nuts or bolts or nails or whatever it might be. And it doesn't ruin the wood around the metal. And that's the biggest problem right there because even with bronze, the bronze will eventually end up starting to deteriorate. Yeah, but the wood it around it doesn't suffer very badly at all. Stainless steel seems like it would be an answer, but it isn't because you can only buy stainless steel wood screws in 18.8, uh, which is an alloy. And uh, it's not a very good one. So what happens with that is it starts to deteriorate. It gets what they call crevice corrosion. But if it's going to get holes in it, the electrons that used to be in that hole had to go somewhere. I've seen boats fastened with stainless and the whole boat is just nothing but bleed and rust everywhere. Bronze is still the answer and that's why we're using it on Orca. I'm going to go get my spanner and drop that in place and see how it fits. Boy, it looks pretty good. I, I can't expect too much more than that. Really, I'm going to clamp it in place nice and tight before I start drilling. Right here is the corner right here, so I figured, well, I'll put a bolt right there. Then I want to put one in here to stop this thing from wagging back and forth. And this is our draw tight, and then I'm going to put one down here. I'm drilling this hole with battery power. Now, I think in times going by, nobody would have thought you could do this. You'd get a big, giant, two-handled drill, and 
Oh, I don't know. It just doesn't need to be. These days, you've got power in these batteries. So, you know, I'm like anybody else. If something's really good and it works for me, I'm going to use it. Look at it ejecting. I mean, this thing is hauling ass. I love it when a bit cuts like this because it gets the job done so quickly. You feel like Superman. This is a 9 16th barefoot ship organ. I'll explain all that to you later in a little uh, demonstration at the table, but uh, nothing drills as easy as this. This is the only way to go right here. Well, let's see how we did on this side here. This is the same depth as the other side. So, like that. Oh my goodness, that whole combination of methods and drill bits makes it come out just nice like that. You, you can't imagine it coming out that good, but that's what happens. That one's tight. Stand it up here for the first time here. <laughs> Looks good, huh? Look at that. 34 feet of Quercus Alba right there. And uh, that is nice timber. Look how flexible it is. You know, it's not like rigid. The next thing for me to do is to connect the stem. And uh, the stem and the forefoot go together in a little bit different way, but I'm anxious to do that. And, uh, you know, we've got it stood up here. Once we get the stem connected to it, we're going to lay it back down and connect the stem. And then we're going to stand it up again. It'll be sticking right up there. And then we're going to connect it to an overhead crane that we've got and pull it up. And we'll really get a look at it then with the right angles and the things sit in the right attitude. So that's what we're looking forward to.